What's up YouTube? Today we're going to be installing a Carcero without the factory wiring harness. So if your vehicle wiring harness has been cut, you're going to have to directly wire your radio wiring harness to the vehicle wiring inside the car. Now this can be kind of overwhelming if you don't understand how to test these wires to be able to properly hook each wire up. So what we're going to do is cover some of the tools and some of the tricks to getting this done. All right, so we're gonna install this Kenwood stereo here. Let's get this thing unboxed and get right to it. Guys, so first things first, you've got to understand what all these wires are. So we've got the harness here for this Kenwood receiver, and since we don't have a factory wiring harness adapter, what we're going to do is directly wire these wires directly to the car's wiring. So I always start with the power wires first. What you have here is you have your yellow, which is your constant power, you have your red, which is your switch, your accessory, and your ground. Those are the main power wires that you need to hook up. In some cases, if you have an orange wire, that means you need to hook it up to the lights. That way the lights dim when you turn the headlights on on the car. The other wires you've got here, this is the steering wheel control input. Now, if you were having steering wheel controls and you wanted an adapter to hook up, you would use this. Uh, this is for your power antenna or power amplifier turn on. You've got a mute. If you're hooking up a hands-free cell phone kit, it has this automatic mute function that will mute the radio when a call comes in. And the rest here, you've got green, you've got white, purple, and gray. Now these are going to be your speaker wires. All right, so the first thing we need to do is remove this stereo so we can wire in the new one. All right guys, so this is an older Alpine stereo that's in here, and I'm going to swap it out with a little bit more modern Kenwood because the USB port stopped working on this so you could no longer hook it up to a phone for music. All right guys, so on this one here, the shop that put this in used a wiring harness. So you've got this wiring adapter here along with the harness that plugs into the radio. We're going to demonstrate how to wire the radio without one of these connectors here. A lot of the older vehicles out of the 80s and the 70s, you're not gonna have these connectors anymore. And in many in the 90s and the 2000s, a lot of them have been cut off uh, because somebody put a stereo in it, didn't have an adapter, or maybe you just plain out don't want to use an adapter. I'm going to show you guys how to wire it up not using the adapter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna cut this connector off to show you guys how to wire the radio up when you don't have the connector there. Now, when cutting this off, I recommend cutting one wire at a time. The reason for that is, is if you connect the constant power wire with the crimp tool and you cut through them all at the same time, you'll actually send power down to the other wires just by making the connection through the crimp tool. If you decided to cut all of them at the same time, you might pop the fuse going to the constant wire. All right, guys, so if you're in a situation where your car harness has been cut and all you have is a bunch of bare wires here, what you've got to do is determine which wire is what so that you could properly wire this up. All right, so the first thing that you want to start with is by determining your power wires. Now, to do this, you have to have a test light or a multimeter. I prefer the test light because it's a lot easier and quicker to use. So you take this end here and put it somewhere on uh, bare metal, an area that's going to make a good ground connection. I can see back here there's a bare piece of metal that I should be able to hook this to and get a good ground. If you don't have a good ground on this, the test light's not going to light up. Okay, now what you want to do is strip each wire back. Do this about a half of an inch. Okay, so now what you've got to do is take your test light and touch each one of the wires with the test light until it lights up. All right, at this point, I don't have the ignition on, I don't have the headlights on, I don't have anything on. The car is basically off. So the only wire out of all these wires here that I've got stripped back that should have power on it is going to be our main constant wire that goes directly to the battery. So if you touch each one of these wires here, 
you can see that the test light is not lighting up. But once you get down to this one here, it lights up. Now you know you've found your constant power wire. This goes directly to the battery. Now you wanna be real careful not to let these wires touch each other because if that constant wire were to touch anything else, it would put power down whatever other wire that would be there and could possibly short that out. So you wanna be careful with that to make sure that the constant wire doesn't touch anything. If you go around the test light and you cannot find any power on any of the wires, it's likely that you have a blown fuse. And a lot of times they time the dome light with the constant power wire. So make sure you check the radio or the dome light fuse first to make sure that you don't have a blown fuse if you can't find any power on any of the wires. So what I'm going to do is take the constant wire and twist it together with the yellow wire on the radio wiring harness. Twist that together, put a white cap on there, and a high quality crimp tool. And now you've made your constant battery connection. Now it's time to find your switch power. You do this by taking your key, put it in ignition, and turn it to the on position without starting the car. Now you're going to find the ignition switch or accessory wire. Let's go through, okay, right there. So we can see that one's lighting up. Now let's hold our test light on the wire there and then we'll turn the key off. Okay, we can see that the light turns out with the key. Now we know we have our accessory power. Take the red wire, twist it together with your accessory wire that you found on the vehicle and go ahead and twist those together and white cap that connection as well. Now there's also going to be wires or a wire that sends electricity down it when the headlight's on. This is called the illumination wire. The illumination wire will send power to the car stereo to tell the stereo that the headlights are on. What it does is it dims the lights in the radio slightly for driving at night. The radio that we're installing doesn't actually have that feature so we won't be hooking that up. But I do want to locate that wire to show you guys if your car stereo that you're putting in has an orange illumination wire, you're going to want to hook that up as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the headlights on the vehicle. I've got the headlights on. I'm going to look for a wire that is now lit, lit up. Okay, so right there, this red and black wire right here we can see is lighting up our test light. So let's verify that this shuts on and off with the lights. So I'm gonna turn the headlights off. Turn the headlights on, okay. So now we know that that is our illumination wire. It's very important that you cap this wire off if you're not going to use it. Because if you leave this wire bare inside the dash while you're driving with your headlights on, it could short out to something metal in the dash and cause your headlights to not work. So make sure you cap any unused wire off that you're not going to use. Okay, so as another precaution, I like to turn the ignition on, turn the headlights on, and go through and touch each one of these wires to make sure we don't have any power on them. All right guys, so none of these wires have any power on them. I've gone through and checked each one of them with the headlights on, with the ignition on, obviously with it hooked up to the battery. The rest of these wires are dead. They don't have any power going to them. Okay, so now what we've got to do is find our ground wire. And to do this, we're going to take the wire and stick it into our constant power on our radio wiring harness. I'm gonna jam it in here in the back so it doesn't fall out. What this is going to do is give us an extension of power. So then we take this end of the test light and hook it to the end of the wire that we've jammed into the constant wire. Now if you take this test light and you touch it on something metal, it's going to light up because it's going to verify that's a ground source. So if you touch this on something metal behind there, you can see the test light lights up. That's a ground, that's a metal spot that's actually making ground connection. Now find the wire that lights up when you touch it on the ground. So you can see this black wire here. They conveniently made the black wire ground on this car, so that's the first one I went to. The rest of the wires you can see are not lighting up. The reason why they're not lighting up is they're not a ground connection. So we're going to use this black wire for the ground. Alright guys, so you can see this little contraption that I've made here. So 
This is how you're going to determine the speaker wires. You take a little 9 volt battery and you take a couple alligator clips like this here and you go ahead and hook them up to the battery. So you put the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive. You can see I've got this green wire wired up here to the positive terminal of the speaker. Now I've got the ground hooked up to the ground side of the battery and when I touch these two wires together it's going to make the speaker make a little pop sound. Okay, so you can hear the little bit of sound that happens when you hook this up to it. So this is going to allow you to be able to determine which wires are what inside the vehicle. So you're going to hook this up the same way in the car. You're just going to determine the location of the speakers by listening for the sound as you touch each one of the wires. So one thing to note, watch the speaker when it moves. Okay, with it hooked up correctly, with the negative on the negative and the positive on the positive, you can see that the speaker moves out. That means that the speaker is in proper phase and that you've got the polarity correct. But what happens when you reverse it? So let's take the positive and we will put this positive on the negative and we'll put the negative on the positive. Now watch closely when I touch the wire together, watch which direction the speaker initially moves when I touch the wire. See how the speaker actually moves in. So I'm going to touch it. The speaker moves in rather than out. That means you've got it hooked up backwards. So that's how you determine the polarity of the speaker. So if you don't know which one's positive and you don't know which one's negative, know that if you've got your positive negative hooked up correctly on your battery and you hook these up you can see that the speaker is now going to move out when I hook this up. See how that speaker pushes up? That's properly in phase. If you hook these wires up backwards in the car you'll have your left speaker moving in and your right speaker moving outward and you're going to make the sound really distorted and the bass is going to sound horrible. So you want to make sure that you have the polarity hooked up correctly so that the speakers are all moving in the same direction at the same time. Alright guys, so now what you've got to do is determine your speaker wires. So you've got the remaining wires here left, and you can see that I've got two, four, six, eight wires, which is exactly the amount of speaker wires for a four speaker system. So we know we've got all our power wires hooked up now, now we're down to the speaker wires. And you can see that there's a little bit of white tape on these wires here. This tells me that from the factory this is probably a pair. So this is probably a pair and this is probably a pair. So what I'm going to do, of course we've got our little battery here hooked up with these cables. What I'm going to try first is the ones that have little tape on there. Alright, I can hear that little bit of a pop there. That's coming from the left rear speaker. Now what you've got to do is determine which wire is which as far as the polarity. Now this is really hard to do because these speakers are in the doors. So in order to watch the speaker move in and out, you'd have to pull the door panels off. So what I've done is I've jumped on a forum to determine which wire is what. A lot of websites there out there will give you the colors polarity wise on a car. So what you're going to do on the radio wiring harness is take and strip the green wires back because we're going to be hooking up the left rear speaker at this point. So again, make sure that you've got the positive on the positive so that you get the proper sound and everything is in phase. So I'm going to start with the blue and yellow wire and hook that up to our green wire. Now every car is different. So just because these colors are what it is on a Honda Pilot doesn't mean it's going to be that way on a Chevy Blazer or a Ford Escort. So make sure that you're testing each wire individually because even through the years a 2010 Pilot might be different than a 2004 Pilot. I found lots of websites that have radio wiring um, diagrams that give you which wire is what. I'll put those in the link uh, or the description below the video, I'll put some of those, I'll link those so that you guys can check those out if you want to verify your vehicle. A lot of times the wiring colors will be on there of the polarities and the positives, negatives, power wire, speaker wires, all that. And again, I can't stress the polarity enough. You can hook the speakers up backwards and it will work. You will get sound out of it, but it won't sound as good as it should. 
So make sure that you have each speaker in phase. All right guys, my camera keeps shutting off because it's freaking hot in my garage and my camera is overheating. It's like the 4th of July and 100 million degrees. And I've got the doors shut, so it's like freaking hot as crap in here. So I apologize that my camera keeps shutting down here. But we're down to the right front speaker. We're gonna verify that we're getting a speaker pop out of the right front. Hear that pop there? That's the right front door. So we're going to hook this up and that's it. We've got all the wires just about hooked up with these last two here. Now this car does have steering wheel controls and this radio has the ability to hook up an interface that allow it to communicate with the steering wheel controls. We're not going to do that in this video. We'll save that for a later video coming up. So all the wiring is pretty much complete. So this wire here would be the one that we would hook up for the steering wheel controls. Now you do have to have an interface for that. And there's a little wire here that we hook up, put a little interface in there. I'll show you how to do that. This mute wire would be for a hands-free kit on a phone kit that's used virtually uh, not anymore because we have so much Bluetooth stuff that we don't ever use that anymore. So we've got all our connections made. We've got all the wires capped off that we're not using and this radio is wired up. All right guys, so now we're down to one final step that I like to do to clean things up and that is to take some electrical tape and wrap it around the wires just to give it a nice clean install. You can see that the factory wiring comes out of a, a electrical tape covered in another rubber sheet of protectant there and that keeps the wires protected and properly organized. So we can kind of continue that along with some electrical tape. All that's really doing is keeping the wires tightly together so they don't get wrapped around anything else. Then we're going to take this wire here that would be for our steering wheel controls and we're just gonna tape that back onto the factory wiring harness like that. Take your radio and plug it in there. Plug your antenna in, don't forget to do that. Otherwise you don't have any radio reception. And let's verify this thing works. Take the key, turn it on. See things are starting to light up here. Press volume knob to cancel demo. Yes, we don't want demo mode. That's music July 14th through the 16th on multiple stages. Great entertainment and a beautiful All right. city. All right, so you can see that's working. Let's make sure we're gonna turn the headlights on, make sure our radio doesn't shut off or do anything weird. And that's working correctly. We're going to make sure that the stereo turns off with the ignition. So we turn the key off, that turns off. Now we're going to turn the ignition back on and make sure that it stayed on the same radio station so that we know that we've got our constant power hooked up. Okay, it stayed on tuner 97.9, which is what it was on before. So we know that the radio was wiring correctly. I can hear all the sound out of all four speakers. It does sound correctly, so I know everything is in phase. Shuts on and off with the key. Nothing happens when you turn the headlights on, which is what we want it to because this doesn't have an illumination wire. If it had an illumination wire, these lights would dim when we turn those on. But this stereo doesn't have that feature in it. So that's it. That's how you wire up a radio when you don't have a wiring harness adapter. All right guys, so we've got the factory radio trim piece put back on. We've got the dash kit in there. We've installed the little trim ring that holds, or the radio sleeve rather, that holds the radio secured into the aftermarket dash kit. Now all we do is plug the radio in. Make sure you've got your antenna hooked up and slide it in the slot. And that's it. All right guys, thanks for watching DIY Bry. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, consider subscribing. I do all types of uh, DIY type projects around the house, cars, stereo systems, whatever. So make sure you stay tuned for my upcoming videos. I also have links below the video that uh, have, you know, pertaining information, other additional videos that may be helpful uh, to you. I also have links over to Amazon for some of the tools and products that we installed into this particular car. So make sure you check out those links and keep doing those do-it-yourself projects.